Narcissistic abuse can transform you into a loner, preferring isolation over the company of others, even friends and family. Why? You struggle with symptoms that no one seems to understand social anxiety, social awkwardness, agoraphobia, fear of being judged, fear of not being understood, and fear of being taken advantage of. The world becomes a dangerous place to explore. So, as a trauma response, you choose to stay with yourself. Loneliness becomes a constant companion, but others don't understand. They label you as egocentric or a big introvert with no social skills. Today, I'm here to prove why it's okay to feel this way and what you can do about it. Today's episode is about five reasons why you prefer to stay at home after surviving narcissistic abuse. If that sounds interesting and you want to learn more, please consider subscribing. Your subscription helps spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. Number one, being at home means having control over your surroundings. Being at home means having control over your environment in a positive way, not narcissistic control where everything has to go your way, but predictability and certainty. Home means comfort, the comfort of your bed, the familiar spot on your couch where you can relax and watch TV. You don't have to deal with people because your soul is drained. You're experiencing soul fatigue. Interacting with others feels inauthentic because you don't have the energy, so you prefer to stay inside your four walls. It brings you peace. Others might ask if you get bored or if you want to talk. Perhaps not, because you need space to process everything the narcissist did to you. You try to dissect the relationship to see them for who they are, whether or not you do it successfully. You seek positive control, avoiding judgmental, demanding, controlling and pushy people. You do things at your own pace without anyone yelling, screaming, berating, belittling or harming you. You don't have to walk on eggshells. To those who haven't been through what you have, it may seem boring, but to you, it's a dream come true. How do I know this? It's been my life for the last eight or nine years. Most of my time is spent at home, contributing significantly to my healing journey. Number two, it's your own space and you can claim it. Autonomy, freedom, peace, serenity, these words become alien to survivors of narcissistic abuse when the narcissist shares the same space. We don't have a safe corner. We may spend a few minutes or hours in the bathroom, but that's all. They try to disturb us there too, not even letting us sleep, resulting in zero autonomy, zero freedom, zero identity, zero personality. It's all gone, eliminated, erased. But when you move into a new space, even a small room just for one person, it can feel like an empire, a palace. I remember renting my first small room, feeling like it was my empire, my palace. There was peace and silence, no banging pots, no hitting, just peace. The autonomy and freedom become alluring. Number three, you may struggle with agoraphobia. Agoraphobia, the fear of crowded places, small spaces, and being around many people might affect you. Perhaps you have auditory sensitivity, loud noises hurt your ears. Many people talking at once is triggering and you don't know who to respond to first. The demand for attention is unbearable. I've been there. What's exciting for others may be daunting for you. I avoided malls, theaters and shopping complexes because they weren't my thing. Social anxiety and social awkwardness are other issues stopping many survivors from exploring the world. These issues originate from the narcissist's maltreatment their constant criticism and suppression of your voice. Over time, this leads to anxiety about speaking up, resulting in introversion and altered personality. This was my personal experience. In my formative years, I stuttered a lot, not from lack of confidence, but from terror in my body. My father mocked, slapped and punched me, silencing me. This led to my social anxiety and awkwardness as I misread and mind read people, assuming their behavior mirrored my abusers. Our trauma brain tries to keep us safe, often stopping us from initiating conversations. Number four, when at home, survivors can control their time. At home, survivors can control their time, choosing when and how to engage with others, often virtually. With work from home becoming the norm, you can decide the medium of engagement. In physical presence, you're compelled to stay, unable to tend to your own wounds. You might struggle with ad caused by trauma, zoning out, and dissociating in overwhelming environments. At home, you decide the schedule, meetings, and interactions. This freedom is why many survivors prefer staying home, avoiding social anxiety and expressing themselves fully with a barrier between them and others. Number five, the solitude of a safe space facilitates deep healing. 
our nervous systems are overwhelmed with a narrow window of tolerance. Small stressors throw us into anxiety or freeze mode. Public overstimulation impairs our performance. Healing, according to Judith H. Herman's triphasic model begins with stabilization, not catharsis. Stabilizing the nervous system with a consistent, predictable routine in a safe environment is crucial. This sense of safety allows our nervous system to shut down survival responses and access executive functioning, thinking rationally, deciding, performing, thriving and growing. The predictability and connection with a safe space keep us inside, especially in the initial healing phases. My main goal in this episode is to normalize self-isolation and the preference for staying home. It's not a curse. Society has its standards and expectations, but I urge you to question them. Are they fundamentally narcissistic? Why should you conform? Freedom isn't just from the narcissist, but from everything narcissistic. Use your experience with the narcissist as a catalyst to move on. That's it for today's episode. I hope you found it insightful. Let me know if you have anything to share in the comments below. I'll talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.